Okay, so in this next segment, we're going to talk more specifically about uh, the role of a tester in the testing task, now that we've already talked about uh, some foundation work in Agile, XP, and, and Scrum, and move away from the practices. So what we know so far about testing is that we have developer testing, that is that unit testing, and that we have that uh, user story validation uh, testing. I hope you also have continuous integration, that you have an automated build process and a rerunning of the unit tests and a rerunning of whatever automation you have. Uh, we used to call that build validation, but whatever you have in the continuous integration process. That's great. Those things are really good and they're really going to help improve the quality of the delivered product pretty fast. But does that mean that there's no bugs? Because we do significant unit testing, because we have user story validation, does that mean that there's no bugs? Absolutely not. So let's talk about our work. You may hear from other people on the team, if the developer already tested that function in a unit test, why do you have to do it? Uh, the team has to fully understand the value of unit testing and the limitations of unit testing. That if a developer is running a test on a, uh, at the code level um, of, a piece of, of a piece of functionality in isolation, uh, we're running tests where that piece of code is talking to other pieces. You will probably be running it in an environment that's more like the context of the running environment of what the application uh, will eventually look like, even if it's just one more step closer to uh, that running environment. Uh, just because a developer does a unit test does not mean that we don't have to test uh, around that function and test how that function works, interacts with a bunch of other functionality. So unit testing does not replace our testing. So even that unit testing and the, and the user story validation, that is not end-to-end -end testing, workflow testing, user scenario testing. Uh, that kind of testing is usually one path when you do it in Agile. Uh, even if you do it in Agile, it may just be the happy path. It may just be uh, validating, well, this is the path that we want users to go on. Um, that uh, all of those alter alternative paths and uh, the types of testing that we spend so much of our time on, who does that stuff? Uh, what's left for the, the, the old school tester, the old school QA, the person who uh, in the last millennium was called a QA? What's left for, for these kind of people? Who's going to do tester testing? Who's going to run the same scenario with five different pieces of data? Who's going to execute the unexpected paths, the, the alternative paths, going back and uh, to earlier places in the, in the path, in the workflow, and changing data, editing data, calling different records in the same workflow, D doing uh, subtasks, going back and, and uh, um, changing dates, and doing all those kind of crazy things that the testers do that are really essential to releasing high quality software. So um, we have to do that kind of testing somewhere. And, and remember, as I said in the, the last video, there is no specific call for testers who do our kind of work in uh, Scrum or XP. So um, we need to put that in. The team also has to understand the difference between testing and, and what QA is. So um, quality assurance, guaranteeing quality, uh, in anybody's definition, is as much about process uh, as it is about the software itself. And that, that whole idea of what happens during the project, the process that we follow, is really removed from the, from the team. If, I'm, if I use that, that definition of what the team is in Scrum, uh, anything having to do with process is moved to the Scrum Master. The Scrum Master owns the process. The Scrum Master's job is removing impediments, uh, helping people work efficiently, uh, improving the process. That is their job. That is not the team's job. So in the old days, if I used to be... Uh, a QA, I would have a significant impact on uh, the process and standards and uh, that old kind of QA type stuff. That doesn't happen anymore with, on, the, on the team itself. The team is a manufacturing group. We get the software done. Uh, we can have suggestions. We can talk in, in retrospectives about improving the process, but we don't own the process by any stretch of the imagination. That is owned by the Scrum Master. Um, the team also has to understand the nature of testing, the, the impossibility of complete coverage, that we could test the same function with an infinite piece of data, with infinite pieces of data, uh, different data formats, different sizes, and, and all the types of data, uh, uh, rare data, boundary data, all that kind of, kind of stuff that's really 
the, the, the nuts and bolts of our testing job, um, the team has to know that we will never exhaustively test every single piece of data in every single path and every single, single function. Uh, that's just not the nature of testing. Um, so especially now that we're in a, a severely uh, compressed cycle. If we used to have months uh, and had, had more liberty, we still couldn't uh, uh, do uh, complete testing and that, that fake notion of uh, complete testing, of testing everything. But now that we're in such a, a more compressed development environment, uh, our coverage is going to be just so much dramatically lower that we will we'll just never be able to reach the levels of coverage uh, that we had in longer development cycles. Uh, by the way, most companies have done away with this this job title QA, which is great because uh, we, we uh, people who were uh, called QA, the, the test engineers, quality engineers, uh, it was really a misnomer to call us uh, QA anyway. And if you want to have that argument about uh, about being a QA, go back to 1986 because uh, we do not guarantee quality, right? So that that's actually a very good move. Uh, uh, it's it's great in the agile world that that in, in any kind of agile or scrum training that you would go do, it is drummed into the team that the team owns quality. The team all works together toward releasing a quality product. Quality is not a single point of failure that belongs to these people who we call QA uh, without any power or authority. So, so the, the, the whole team owns quality is really a significant move forward and get rid of that QA job title. People, also, people on the team also need to understand that the, these very short cycles is going to prevent us from doing the breadth and depth of testing that we used to do. It's going to be much more narrow and much more focused, but we will just never achieve that, that, that um, even if it's redundant, even if some of it was wasted, even if some of it had to be repeated because of functional changes, in longer development projects, we could just get a whole lot more testing done. Now that testing is so much more compressed, um, we're just not going to get the, the, the depth and breadth of, uh, co of testing coverage that we used to. Uh, but also, with uh, design-as-you-go styles of development, um, testing might be more difficult. There could be, in, a, in subsequent sprints, changes to the design that invalidate the testing that I did uh, in a previous sprint that I may just not get to test very thoroughly because we just don't have the time in this compressed cycle. Um, and I also want to bring up this one notion that I brought up in an earlier video, that testing may mean that you do have a separate phase after all the development is done where you're going to be doing your workflow, end-to-end -end regression, performance security, environment testing, that you may not be part of the development sprints. You may be in a hardening sprint. You may be in a, 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 a testing sprint that happens after the development is done. As I said earlier, that's a little bit waterfall-like uh, to, to tack on testing at the end, but... Um, uh, th there are certain organizations that, uh, where that has been successful, they don't release uh, the product out to the customer until after the testing sprints. Um, there's another important concept I want to bring up here, and that is this idea of uh, uh, continuous process improvement. Uh, just because you, you get this scrum training and you learn how things are done and you finally get used to doing things the way that you are, um, on the next sprint, everything could change. You work with a different team, everything could change. Uh, because in this, in this new development paradigm, we're constantly reflecting back on how we did, what can be improved, what can be changed, and the, the nature of self-forming, self-directing teams. We could decide between two sprints, we're going to stop doing that. And if the team decides that, then that's what the team does because we're self-directed teams. So, so how we do things today is not by definition how we're going to do things, the, the, the process that has to be followed. The very nature of, of Agile is that people and interactions are more important than processes. Processes can change from sprint to sprint. So wrong Agile, bad Agile. Bad Agile is no documentation at all to test from. You have to have these written user stories when, when they're meant to be on index cards. That's fine. You don't have to have a big, giant ALM tool, an application lifecycle management tool to manage your user stories. They can be on index cards, on a whiteboard. Great. But no documented, uh, documentation at all to test from. Bad Agile. Um, no definition of done. Bad Agile. That people could be uh, putting code into source control uh, an hour before the sprint is done, an hour before the retrospective. You need a better definition of done, right? That's bad Agile. Uh, or no enforcement of done. Uh, like milestone criteria when they're not enforced, it's bad development practice. Also wrong Agile is not including test engineers in the sizing and estimation process. 
I have sadly see this, seen this very commonly, where a team will say, well, we're going to estimate and size and play poker and all those things and give points and all those things you learn in, in Scrum of how to size and estimate your project and decide what we're going to do in the, these different sprints and not include the test engineers, not include the testers um, for a variety of reasons, but that's bad agile. Um, we, we have to be in those, in those sprint planning meetings uh, giving our estimates because the amount of time it takes to test something will obviously vary from user story to user story and the rest of the team may not be fully aware of, you know, some user story may have one or two pieces of data that we need to test and can say, okay, well, it can move out, of, it's done, it can move to the next. Uh, we can demonstrate this, it's fine. Another user story could have 50 pieces of data that we need to try in a specific environment to say, yes, this is done or no, this is not done. So we really need the test estimates um, in those initial uh, planning uh, phases. So uh, bad sprint, wrong sprint is also uh, no enforced or measurable unit testing. Unit testing is essential. We don't need to discuss that again. No automatic builds, bad sprint. No significant automation, bad, uh, wrong agile. Um, where the team doesn't understand what testing is about. Luckily, I think in this move to Agile, teams are seeing more of the inside of what happens in testing and are understanding testing better, but it's wrong Agile, it's bad Agile to, for the team to not understand the nature of testing. And it is also wrong Agile for everybody on the team to stop documenting. Right? No more requirements documents, no more database schemas, no more design docs, no more tech specs, but still expect the testers to document every test case in your test case manager. Whatever test case manager you're using, if there is still a demand on the testers to document all our tests in that uh, test case repository, that's actually wrong Agile. Um, everybody else on the team will be able to work faster. Everybody on the team will be able to do more design as you go, except us. And I've sadly seen this in many organizations where the, where the need for the test team to continue to use that test case repository the way that they used to before we were Agile uh, will kill the test effort. So uh, that's wrong Agile, uh, and then let's move on to the next.